I, I've been ministering in a series entitled Facing the Cross. Uh, today is the end of the series, but just so you know, tomorrow, uh, excuse me, next Sunday morning, I'll be beginning a new series entitled Life Here and Hereafter. We'll continue to celebrate the resurrection and the impact of the resurrection of Jesus upon our lives. But I, I want to conclude our month series entitled Facing the Cross. Matthew chapter 28. If you have it, if you'll follow along with me, just a few verses. It reads, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. For there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Verse 3, His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. For he is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come now and see the place where he lay. Verse 7, Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now, I have told you. Just a couple more verses this morning. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. For they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Father, we say thank you for your word. Lord, help us to gain your specific revelation, Lord, into our lives this morning. Lord, change our hearts if necessary. God, as our hearts choose to receive what you have for us this morning. God, and that you be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Could you imagine... That early morning, some 2,000 years ago, being one of those faithful women who had heard the message of Jesus, heard the prophetic, probably read, if not had read to them, the prophetic message of Jesus, witness the horrible act of this crucifixion and everything else that's built into it. Probably no different than many of us. We, we, as horrible as it is, we, we all have experienced the, the passing of way of somebody who was dear to our hearts. And, and we're often compelled to go back to that, that place of burial as a, as a place of honor, a place of respect. Sometimes uh, hoping for, for the impossible. And here are these faithful women, close followers of Jesus, going to visit the tomb that held, as they probably believed, the cold, breathless body of their beloved leader, their teacher, the one that they, we would literally say that they had staked their hope in. They went to the tomb that morning in the same frame of mind, which I think we often go to, to show that respect, as I made mention of. Their, their hearts were full, yet I believe their hearts were heavy, burdened by, by the experience of this close one that had just shortly passed away. How difficult it had to have been for them to reconcile to themselves, to the fact that they had been separated from Jesus. He's gone. The one that they believed was their divine Lord, their Savior, this Jesus that they had invested so much with. Here now they get to this early Sunday morning and they, they reach the grave and the discovery, for one reason or another, we realize that the discovery greatly disturbed them. They saw that the stone had been rolled away from the opening of the tomb and they hastily concluded that the body had been removed. Possibly that somebody had now stolen the body of their precious divine lords. 
impelled by grief, they stood within the rock whom burial place to behold a vision of the angels who were clothed with, the, clothed with this dazzling garment. As, as they stood there in their sorrow, a voice began to speak to them. A voice much different than any other one that simply said this, Fear not, fear not, for I know that you are seeking Jesus who was crucified. The voice continues that he is not here for he has risen simply as he said. Come now, see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly, catch this, and now go quickly and tell his disciples. Go and tell somebody else the miracle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I happen to believe that that first resurrection had many implications into those women's lives. Into the others who would show up to come in to see the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. I wonder today, what, what does the resurrection say to you? What maybe does the resurrection imply into your life? That's simply why we're here this morning celebrating the, the resurrection of Jesus. What would it say to those who, who maybe don't even believe in Jesus? Who maybe have just heard little thoughts, little statements of Jesus? What, what would it say to those? The reality of the resurrection. Once again, the statement, for he is not here, for he is risen. Just as he said, come, see, see the place where the Lord lay. Wow. I want to give you just four things this morning. If you have this morning's bulletin, you can follow along. There's a place for notes on the back of this morning's bulletin. I'm sure the points will be up behind me. As I say every morning, if somehow you miss a portion of the message you wanted, just email me, call me, text me. And I'll be glad to send you the notes that the Lord has provided for us this morning. But, but number one, I, I believe that the resurrection speaks of a living Lord. The resurrection speaks of a living Lord. It was not Christ's death that proved his mission or, I believe, his messiahship. Had our Lord remained in the grave and returned to dust, our darkness would be as deep as which reigned for those three hours after the crucifixion. There would be no hope for deliverance. There, there would be no hope from sin. There would be no hope from death if Jesus simply would have just died on the cross and remained in the grave. But as you've probably heard, death wasn't able to hold him. Death wasn't able to, his, his resurrection was triumphant. It was proof simply that all he claimed to be, the token that, that his work was accepted by his Father God. There's no record in history more firmly established by the word of trustworthy witnesses than these facts, that Christ died, that Christ was buried, and that on the third day that Christ rose again. Men, men and women of all over this world, of what I would classify of unimpeachable character, have borne witness that they saw him, that they knew him, that they ate with him, that they talked with him as he moved amongst them shortly after his resurrection. Catch this, Acts 1-3. He showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. We have record after record of good individuals, unimpeachable individuals that declare that and witness that they had seen Jesus, that they spoke with Jesus, that they, that they were able to eat with Jesus. No, no fact in history I believe is more certain than this for you and I this morning that Christ lives. Mm. There should be no doubt in our hearts. I don't believe that there should be any wondering within each one of us. Does Christ live there? There are so many facts. If we would just begin to search it out, don't allow yourself to be distracted by the doubters of the world which we live in. Just simply receive the truth that can be studied throughout all of history, all of history that Christ lives. And because he lives, you and I have the opportunity to live. The resurrection speaks, I believe, of a living Lord. Number two, the resurrection validates Christianity. Think of this. It would be difficult to account for the life of Jesus Christ if we found the record in any other book than the New Testament. 
But Christianity has grown out of the soil of, the, of this historical past. Its mystical revolution invades human inventions. Christ's whole life was simply attended by the miraculous. Why would we expect anything less? It's that which I believe validates Christianity. Uh, the disciples, catch this, didn't really ever believe that they would see Jesus again. They wondered. But I think they're human just like, it, like us. That doubt, and I'm not saying that I think doubt is bad by any means this morning. How, how do we know? Because they left their old life to follow Jesus. And then after he died, they went back to their old life. They went back fishing. We gained that through the revelation of the book of John and, and others. They doubted that they would ever see him again. They just believed he was dead. But their minds and their spirits experienced a great change after they saw the resurrected Jesus. After they saw the, the living Jesus. The disciples had now believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Why? Because they saw the living Jesus. Their faith in the reality of our Lord's victory over death is to us, I believe, of greater significance than any other form of evidence. To say that they saw their lives catch this enduring hardship, suffering, privation, and even death just to support an, an exquisite fable would be an insult to human intelligence. Yet their lives were miraculously changed. Why? Because they were able to experience and to see a living Jesus. A resurrected Jesus. Here they walked with him. They, they gave up everything to follow Jesus. Now he died and they, they thought all was lost. So they went back. Immediately they went back to what they were before. Probably figuring that they wasted life. Wasted a few years of life. But here they had the opportunity to eat with him. To experience him. I don't think people would just endure hardship, endure persecution, endure misery just for the sake of it. Just to carry out some great myth. But I believe their lives were miraculously changed. They had validation to their belief. Hear me this, this morning, church. I, I believe that there's something exquisite in being able to personally to experience Jesus. I wonder this morning as we celebrate this Easter Sunday morning, may, maybe you've heard about Jesus. May, may, maybe you've heard others talking about Jesus. They go, oh, oh, that sounds quite interesting. But I, I wonder this morning, have you ever experienced Jesus? May, maybe you've been in church the vast majority of your whole life. Maybe you've sung songs. But I wonder, have you ever experienced Jesus? I can stand before you as a testimony this morning as, as any other young boy that grew up in the church. My, my life was probably no different until I had that encounter and many encounters exist with the living Lord and, and the miracles that it has done in my life, the change that it has provided, the inspiration that it has provided in my life. I could stand before you today and, and say there's no way that I would do what I'm doing this morning without that personal experience of Jesus. I wonder, have you had that experience? I believe it changes what being a disciple is all about. It changes what being a, a follower is all about. There's something about having some validity to what we believe in. And I believe Jesus wants to provide that validity into your life. Mm. Catch this, 1 Corinthians 15, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive.
shall all be made alive. Number three for you this morning. I believe that the resurrection guarantees the redemption of the soul. The argument of the Apostle Paul is this in 1 Corinthians 15. If Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. For you are yet still in your sins. But I, I'm so glad this morning that Christ has risen. For uh, if Christ had not risen, then the chief cornerstone is taken out of the Christian system. The hopes that men have built on Jesus, I believe, simply begin to crumble to the ground. The faith that saves rests solely on the historic foundation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our faith in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, Romans 5 says, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Mm. What a blessing this morning, church, that, that Jesus has risen. And because he's risen, he's risen, he has the power to redeem our souls, to redeem our very lives. Mm. To know that this is nothing in vain, that it's, it's something real. It's something of great value into our lives. And number four for you, the resurrection is the foundation for the hope of life beyond the grave. The foundation for hope of life beyond the grave. Our Lord's resurrection is a promise of other resurrections. It is on this truth that the doctrine of the future life is established. It proclaims with finality that life here and life beyond the grace is one and continuous. Could we say this? It's unbroken even by death. The same Jesus who was taken from the disciples by death was given back to his disciples by his resurrection. There was no end. It's the same Jesus. It's one and it's continuous. Mm. You know, I've made this statement many times in our lives. I think I even made it Wednesday night. It's painful. I mean, when I think of the disciples and Jesus' mother, it had to have been painful. Just tormenting into their life. What does the future hold? What is it going to look like from this moment on? Mm. They've heard all of the scriptures. But then on the third day, they saw the resurrected Jesus. And it's the hope of the resurrection for those who, who pass with a great relationship with Jesus. So here's the statement I, I made. I want to pass on to you this, this morning. Just hear it for a moment. Let it sink into you. I believe it's applicable, applicable for our lives even this morning. Because we experience this on a yearly basis numerous times possibly throughout the year. It's a revelation that, that Christ gave to me. I'm so glad for the life that I have today. I'm so glad for the hope of the life that I'll have tomorrow. But the reality is that, that I only have so much life here on this earth. I'm only promised a, a certain time period. And, and, and it seems long, but the truth is it's actually quite short. We never feel like we really have enough. We're always wanting more. And here's what I came to that I want to pass on to you. There's so much more that we've never experienced if we can just believe in Jesus. For I believe that this is really just the land of the dying. And once you die, you then go to the land of the living. Eternal life with Jesus, a place where there will be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death to be experienced. But it will be a land of life throughout all eternity. For those, 
for those who have grabbed a hold of Jesus. Why? Because that's the reality of the, the resurrection that, that speaks into our lives. The voice of the Holy Spirit, I, I believe, still speaks to the followers of the living Lord. He says this in Matthew 28, Go quickly and tell that He is risen from the Lord. What, what a great privilege, what a great responsibility that we have as, as believers of Jesus to go in to tell somebody else that Jesus lives, that Jesus reigns, that Jesus is triumphant, that, that Jesus can forgive the sins of our lives, to go in to tell others the foundation of the message we proclaim to the world uh, that has lost its way is found in the assurance that we worship and yet that we serve a risen Lord, a living Savior, like, like the early Christians who went everywhere proclaiming that, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scripture. Can I declare to you this morning, church, that this is a message that should ring from our mouths every day. Every day. Again and again, our hearts, I think, need to be reminded that the resurrection is our only assurance of an eternal life. Like all mysteries encompassed in the supernatural power of God, we may not understand them all, but we can embrace them. That's called faith. Embracing. I, I read a scripture this morning. We find it in, in John, the 20th chapter, how, how great it is that you believe because you've seen, but how much greater for those who have not seen and yet believe. Can I tell you, that's us this morning, church. That, that's those that we proclaim the message to, those that haven't seen yet believe and choose to have faith in Jesus Christ. No greater joy can come to the hearts of a believer than that sacred moment when somebody who we have testified confesses their faith in Jesus Christ. Hear me, you want to be inspired in your faith? Go and witness for Jesus. And to hear somebody else confess a belief in, in Jesus Christ. Let me begin to conclude with this, this impactful illustration that I, I read one time. A gentleman by the name of Thomas Yen was a devoted follower of a pagan Chinese faith. Devout from his early early life. Yet as he grew, for some reason, he began to attend a Christian service. And the more he attended that Christian service, the greater the revelation grew within him. That the religious faith that he embraced from a young child was, wasn't quite adequate. Wasn't enough. Several weeks he attended this Christian service. He found his way to a fellowship of, of these believers and he would hear the message of a faithful pastor as he proclaimed that, that redeeming, saving power of Christ is, is, is capable of making the lost whole. Mm. One Lord's Day morning, the story goes that Yin's heart responded to the Spirit's invitation to trust in Jesus for salvation. It was a glorious moment in his broken English when he began to proclaim over and over again, I, I believe in Jesse. I believe in Jesse. I believe in Jesse. Some weeks later after he followed in the footsteps of Jesus and chose to be water baptized that, that Thomas had to experience open heart surgery. Again, the, the pastor found joy in ministering to the spiritual needs in these critical days of, of Mr. Yin's life. Each time the pastor prepared to leave his bedside, Yin never failed to request prayer and to give his testimony. And the, the pastor, I would ask him over and over, what's your testimony? And he would say over and over, I believe in Jesse, I believe in Jesse. One evening, while a nurse was attending his bedside, he realized that things had taken a bad turn for the worse. So she proceeded to contact his pastor. Within minutes, the pastor showed up at the hospital just to begin to minister, to pray, to attend for this new believer. As he was there just fellowshipping with him, 
Mr. Yen looked up at the pastor and made this great proclamation. Tonight, I believe I'm going to go see Jesse. Tonight. I wonder, have you experienced Jesus? It doesn't matter what your life has been like. It doesn't matter your experiences of life. This wonderful gentleman, a life of pagan worship. But he found the real answer in Jesus. And professed over and over. He wanted to share his testimony. He wanted to tell somebody else. Everywhere he would go, he would let them know that I believe in Jesus. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe that's the mark of a follower of Jesus. One who is willing to go. As the angel would say, go quickly and tell somebody else. Jesus said, go into all the world and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. Why? Because there are people that need to believe in Jesus need the message of Jesus mm. but I wonder have you believed you see I believe that the resurrection identifies to us that we we believe in a, a risen Lord a living Jesus it's that which I believe validates our Christianity. It's that which guarantees the redemption of the soul and it's that which is the foundation of hope beyond the grave Mm. That this isn't the end, but this is just the doorway into our eternal life with Jesus Christ. Mm. I wonder this morning, do you know Jesus? I want to invite the musicians to come back with me this morning. What a privilege to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. To know Him. But as I've asked many times, and I'm going to ask one more time, I wonder, do, do you know him?